It's not this or this. Then what is it? It's free. I'm gonna share with you what I wish someone told me 10 years ago when I was going through my worst acne phases. Because I would say our beloved products only make up about 30 to 40% of the battle, especially when you're facing acne and hormonal acne. But I love you. So let's start with the simplest and easiest thing that we can do right now, starting today, without opening your wallet. Bye. Oh, and disclaimer, I wasn't studious enough to become a medical expert. So I'm just sharing all the information I did in my copious amounts of research, listening to health professionals, reading medical journals to help my own skincare journey. Before we jump in, please subscribe if you want real tips on everything skincare and healthy living and check out our Spotify podcast where we talk about everything within. Starting with habits. I didn't know this, but there's a disorder of chronic skin picking and it's called dermatillomania. And it's a mental health condition where you compulsively pick at your skin. Most of us don't side on this extreme, but we are all guilty of picking our pimples, touching the areas that we probably shouldn't be laying our fingers on. Look what happened recently when I touched my pimple. Guys, do you see <laughs> this disaster on my face. I had a cystic pimple, it popped slash I popped it, and now it just keeps oozing blood. My skin has been so not great, not great. So if we want to reduce the time and the money spent on acne products, here are my tips. First, know your triggers. I tend to pick my skin the most when I'm bored. So when I'm just sitting there, I'll just start feeling my skin. And if I feel something that's like slightly bumpy, I'll dig my fingernails into there. So boredom is like my thing. I know other people start picking when they're stressed or anxious. And when I use pimple stickers, essentially act like a band-aid and seals the area so that you can't actually pick at that place. If you have anything like body acne, acne or bumps on the skin, maybe you have KP on your arms and your legs, wearing clothes that actually make it harder to pick, maybe long sleeve t-shirts. If we can't see it, sometimes we forget it's there and that will just help us not pick. Now the next tip is actually fingernails. This creeped me out a bit and apparently people with long nails produce an average of 270 germ colonies from under their nails whereas the average fingernail produces between 10 to 50. So just depending on how long your nails is, is basically determining how much bacteria is underneath there. We have bacteria everywhere on our bodies. There's good bacteria, bad bacteria on our face, but the ones under here are like probably nastified. Make sure you wash your hands. And what I like to do is also just like routinely get a tissue and wipe under there, especially when my nails start getting long. Shorter the nails might be better if you are prone to picking your skin. It could be your pillowcases for hygiene. It could be wiping your phone screen more regularly, you know, when it like touches our greasy face. Change in habit starts with awareness. So leave the habit that you want to change this week in the comments below. Next is exercise. For all of you who aren't into working out, stay with me because neither am I. I'm not about to tell you to sign up to a gym membership, pump some iron. That is just not my life. <laughs> but what I'm talking about is how to incorporate movement every day into our existing routine. So something that's fun. And the reason is if you have hormonal imbalance that's causing the breakouts, it's probably got to do with insulin resistance. If you haven't watched my video all about that here, make sure you do because it's really important, but I'm not gonna talk about that all over again. But here's a summary that we created, which essentially tells you the flow of what happened. Long story short, we essentially have too much blood sugar pulsing through our system and it throws our hormones all out of balance. And as a result of that, our skin breaks out. So what's the easiest thing we can do to rebalance our whole hormonal system? It's actually just light exercise. So here are my three tips, no matter what fitness level you are, and I'm sure you're going to have fun with it. First, Netflix. <laughs> if you didn't know, they now have like 20 to 30 minute workout videos in collaboration with Nike that now you can just do in the comfort of your own home. So not only are we going to Netflix and chill, we're gonna Netflix and work out, guys. <laughs> 
second tip is just set a reminder for yourself. Hey Google. Sometimes we get so busy and we just need a little bit of motivation and reminder. What's the reminder? So whether it's Siri, whether it's Google, Set a reminder for me to take a 15 minute walk at 6.30 every night. Sure, I'll remind you every day at 6.30 p.m. And pick a time that you're normally free and you just catch yourself mindlessly scrolling on Instagram. Third tip is depending on your routine, if you catch a train, if you catch a bus, I would suggest just getting off one stop earlier and just walk the rest of that leg and get those steps in. The aim is 10,000 steps a day. What are you guys average? I'm actually curious. Where's my phone? <laughs> I walked 90 steps today. Oh my God. Can you hear that? What is going on outside? Well, whatever it is, do what they're doing. I walked all the way to Ikea. Right. And go from because aligning our minds and our bodies is the key to reducing inflammation. And speaking of inflammation, one of the easiest ways that we can inflame our skin and bodies is through food. Nom nom. If there was one tip, this is the one I am most passionate about because it probably changed my life and my skin. Food is medicine, but in our day and age, we tend to abuse all the delicious options out there to the point that it becomes excessive. Mmm. And all we're gonna do is look at what we're currently eating and see where we can peel back in certain areas that could be triggering our breakouts. Coming in hard is reduce your dairy intake. This was really the one thing that started to get my whole body and skin back on track. So the reason is, if you already have hormonal acne, you're dealing with a hormone problem, right? Like something is out of sync. And what dairy products have in them is actually hormones. So either pumped up hormones to make the cows bigger so they can make all the dairy. And all of those extra added hormones are coming into your own system and it's further throwing off that balance. And then, you know, there's things like lactose that can also really upset the stomach, especially if you are lactose intolerant. And switch out your current milk products into like oat milk or soy milk. If you drink coffee, don't go with almond milk. I highly suggest not to because it tastes nasty. If you love cheese like me, we're not about cutting anything out, but choose the times that you do eat cheese. So if it's the week before my period, absolutely not. I will crave it the most, but I know that's when it's going to wreak the most havoc on my face. So I won't have it there. And also pick the types of cheeses that work with you. So soft cheeses have more lactose content and hard cheeses have less. So I tend to gravitate more towards like the cheddars because they are a hard cheese and it just brings me less turmoil on the skin. Now moving on, we're going to re balance the amount of sugar. I'm sorry, but that is one of the main triggers of breakouts. Now guys, don't forget that carbs are also sugar. So going back to the blood sugar we were talking about, sugar and carbs get turned into sugars that start running through our bloodstream, which is why it's called blood sugar. And all of that essentially just gives us energy. But going back to the fact if we're eating too much of these simple carbs and sugary foods, then there's an excess of it. So what it is, is just look at what you're currently eating and see if you can just like peel back the amount that you're consuming. So for example, if you find yourself always eating dessert after dinner, maybe reduce that to five times a week. <laughs> And then after a month of five times a week, it's three times a week. And then see how your skin reacts. And then you'll find that the change is not so drastic. You're not gonna find yourself craving the food and finding other unhealthy substitutes. And it's just like a more harmonious process and a more joyful process. I know it's not the same for everyone. So you have to find what works for you. Now the next one is actually adding. We're done with reducing, we're gonna start adding healthy fats. 
because what it does is keep you fuller for longer. And that's the point, right? We don't want to always find ourselves craving a food and craving snacks so that we're just like always eating potentially bad things. Like it's a different story if you're filling yourself with good things, okay? And if that's the case, you're probably not watching this video because you probably got it figured out. An example of this is avocado. I love avocado. I'm Australian. Avocado toast for life, you know what I mean? Pop an egg on that and we're good to go every single day. So you can even have avocado as guacamole, make your own dip, or I just cut it in half put some soy sauce on it and just eat it out of the avocado. It's kind of like a poor man's sushi, but like, I love it so much. We're still trying to enjoy our life. That's the point. Another one that's great is nuts. So I'm not gonna give you advice that I wouldn't follow myself. And personally, I'm just not gonna be sitting there eating a bunch of nuts. Darkness, my but what I found is nut butters are delicious. And my favorite is this oat butter. You wanna mix the oils with the nuts. So satisfying. And don't be scared to go ham. I love almond butter, specifically this brand. And this is where almond comes into play. Not in the milk form, I love it in the butter form. Oh, on apples. Apples is so good with any type of nut butter. And I know food can be a little bit confusing because you know, every day it might be different. So what I suggest is actually just choose one of them and see which one makes the most difference. So maybe starting with sugar, if you know you have a sweet tooth. Write down what you ate, how you felt after eating it, and what your skin was like the next day, the day after that, and maybe on the third day. And then you can really start to track and like see the patterns of your skin and body, and it will just motivate you to like keep that curiosity going. And so we made this little PDF for you guys if you wanna jot it down or print it out or whatever it is, just to help you guys on your journey, because I feel like this one really is important. Have you ever woken up from a deep sleep, looked at your skin, and it's literally glowing? Glowing! Well, that's what rest can do for you. And I know this sounds simple, but the problem is I feel like life just has too many distractions, too many temptations. Maybe you're binging on shows until 2 a.m. Or maybe you still have the energy to go out. You're like partying into the night, drinking and all this stuff. Like I'm not saying don't do it, but all of this is basically stealing away our glow. And it wouldn't be Beauty Within if we didn't say there's science behind it. So in Chinese medicine, each hour of the day, our body has a specific function. At night is the regulation and repair mode. Between one to 3 a.m., that's when the liver is most active. So the liver is there to act as a detoxification of everything that we eat, everything that's circulating in our body, our blood, to make sure it's all healthy. And acne and inflammation has everything to do with how healthy our blood is. In Western medicine, we know the body produces specific hormones at night that help with fixing damaged and dying cells. So it's basically helping you flush out the weak and keep the strong every single night. And something I'm sure you've all heard of is melatonin. So melatonin is also a hormone that's produced at the highest level just at night and it aids in helping us sleep. But what you might not have known is that melatonin actually acts as an antioxidant to help our bodies fight against oxidative stress. So you can think of melatonin as your natural vitamin C serum that's fighting off all of that bad stuff in our body and it's only produced when we sleep. Try to stay away from caffeinated drinks after 6 p.m. because really that second half of the night is when we're slowly getting into the rhythm of sleep. Listen to your body. I know when I was younger, I could drink coffee at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock and still be able to sleep like but now I truly feel the effects. So what you can do is actually swap that out for floral and herbal teas. The chi is one of my favorite floral teas. They have beautiful variations. You can have chamomile, lotus, you can have rose, and all of these have like no caffeine in them. And it just gives yourself that calm in the night.
Second one is lighting and it has everything to do with the brain. So at around 10 o'clock, I'll start turning off the overhead lights. That's really bright, that's almost like fluorescent and start turning on lamps, which have more of that like yellow incandescent lighting because what this signals to the brain is that it's softer and this will help in our bodies to produce that melatonin hormone so that we can sleep in the next hour or so. Next is creating ambience. So it's similar to conditioning, like Pavlov's dog. Find a positive conditioning that tells our brain once again that, okay, it's time to slow down and sense can be really effective for this. Think about how a smell can bring you back to a specific memory. This acts in the same way. It just triggers, okay, time to rest subconsciously. You can find something with lavender. I have this pillow spray. If you do this repeatedly, your body will know, oh, it's time to sleep. Otherwise, I have this ginger aromatherapy ball and ginger is really good for, you know, everything from digestion to stress relief and warming. So this really helps me ease into bed. Whatever you're sleeping at now, just peel it back. Like if you're sleeping at two, you're not gonna all of a sudden be in bed at 10 o'clock. That's just like impossible. So do it incrementally. So from two o'clock, start sleeping at one. You know, start getting ready at 12, be asleep by one. And then after a month of trying that out, move it up again. And then by 12, you're kind of like setting a really solid routine so that it's easier to wake up naturally. You're not feeling so sluggish. You're not feeling grumpy and all this stuff. And it's like setting us on a positive cycle. So there's a reason they call it beauty sleep, right? Now the fifth and final free tip is all up here. And it's love the skin you're in. I think we are our biggest enemy. And I just think back on when my acne was the worst. I look at it, I feel sad, frustrated, stressed, insecure. And all of that really drives up all these different feelings, which then creates all of these different hormones. For example, cortisol. Cortisol is stress. And when our cortisol levels are up, we're once again creating imbalance with all our hormones, which just makes it harder for our skin and our body to do what it needs to do. By practicing, I think, little steps throughout the day, throughout the week, like going for a walk, you start seeing life differently and you start appreciating yourself and the relationships we have differently. And then we start seeing our skin as almost this reflection and this mirror of what our body is trying to tell us. And we have all the necessary resources and time to figure it out. And it doesn't have to cost anything. So I would say just be kind to yourself and that's it. I honestly love talking about acne because it's just so empowering when you can figure out what it is, especially when you didn't have to spend anything at all. Obviously, if you wanna know my product recommendations, we have a hundred and more videos all about that. Now, this is your reminder to go outside for a walk today, tonight, whatever it is, have some fun with it and check out our Spotify podcast. It's called It's Within. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any tips that you can share with everyone else and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.